anyone has any anything they would like to discuss at this hour, <laughs> these times, at <laughs> this. Well, I just want to say I'm so glad that you um, you asked about those essential oils because I started doing treatments on myself from that cool. low summary that I dug up and it was phenomenal. Just wow. doing the essential oils. I didn't even do the needles. Great. And And I noticed on that, which I'm sorry, I did not notice before, but there is a missing step, which is that after you drain the um the low point either either by um seven star needle or you know bleeding or what have you you also have to needle the source and that's the next step before you go on to the harmonizing points and i apologize that i left that out but please be sure to add that into your summary thank you okay. yes. Actually, I I got the book today, um, Camille. <laughs> oh, which book? Um, the one you recommended, that Doctor, what's his name? Nowbelt. Uh, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Came today, so I just had a quick glance through it. It looks interesting. It looks good. He's very scientific. He really digs into the biochemistry in a way that few people do. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and just so you know, Avi, yeah. um, um, I don't know if if you already knew this and whether you use this, but but his uh, Jeffrey considers his herb company to be the uh, his essential oil company to be the very best source. Like it's one of the few that that he um, considers acceptable for internal <laughs> use. So I'll tell you a secret. <laughs> yes. No, because it's interesting. Well, you know, like anything else that Jeffrey says, hold on one second. Uh, let me let me just uh, do this. A company that sells herbs and spices, you know, cooking, cooking mm -hmm. herbs and spices. And and I love going to their store because, you know, you can try seven different kinds of cinnamon. And and it's really <laughs> true that that I mean, like it blows me away. But the 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 cinnamon that comes from the east side of this caribbean island taste actually does taste different than mm -hmm. the one that comes from the west side of this island and mm -hmm. it's rather amazing so i mean i it, it's one of my favorite things to do to go to this store <laughs> and, and come home and you know cook cook really amazing food from it but um you know i mean i i absolutely would see where it, it would vary medicinally and you know for example jeffrey talks about all the different eucalyptuses and all the mm -hmm. different functions yeah. of that and you know I, I i find that fascinating so yeah. i hope you enjoy your book mary jo <laughs> yeah it look, looks interesting i actually heard that um the best cinnamon comes from sri lanka ah yes yeah a lot of the other cinnamons are actually not cinnamon. There's, there, it's a slightly different species. I can't remember. Like exactly mace. Some of them are, I think, are sort of um, an offshoot of the ma mace. Is it mace? Yeah, you know, that um, other. It looks like cinnamon. It's not mace, but um, well, I mean, are you saying mace with a Z or mace with a C? C. With a C. Mace okay. with a C. M A C E. M A C E. I don't know what mace is, so I I, I don't know. Uh, but I know that most if you go to most places, there is like cinnamon, the cinnamon bark that they sell, and then there's like smaller. The cinnamon bark usually is is it's never quite as curly. It curls a little bit because if you're talking about a tree, how much is it going to curl? And the stuff that they sell in the stores and even like in bulk and stuff is not, it almost curls around your finger no tree is this thin <laughs> it doesn't make sense so it is a different it's some sort of different species and i can't remember what it what it is but it's it's a related species and i'm not sure if in terms of chinese um releasing exterior and harmonizing in a way if the other stuff that they sell that's really culinary is is doing the same thing but yeah the chinese do say you know sri lanka is is where the you know uh, and there is vietnamese um um yes 
um, cinnamon also, but in the but the Vietnamese also produce the other stuff. Unfortunately, well, so and I think it's the Vietnamese cinnamon that is rogue that is used as the herb rogue Oh, okay. Because I actually thought that in Bensky it does say because they they were trading with with India because um, uh -huh. a lot of some of the herbs are Indian actually. You know the, the um, so I'm I'm honestly don't know. Um, uh -huh. You know, I, I, that's what I recall from 25 yeah. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so who yes. knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe our geography 25 years ago wasn't as good as, as we may, may think we have it oh, now. Well, I was referring more to my memory since then, but anyway. Well, yeah, but no, but maybe then when it said Sri Lanka, we thought it said Vietnam, or maybe it said Vietnam when we thought it said Sri Lanka. I don't know what it's, <laughs> but I, I'd, I'd look it up in Bensky and see what, what, what he claims, um, because I'm sure cinnamon does not grow um well it may grow no i, I well, doubt that it grows in china because it's tropical for the most part that would be my assumption but i just uh, buy my essential oils in um you know like a health food store i thought i had some close to hand here but actually i move <laughs> i move them in a big cleanup um i'm not too sure actually what brand they are but uh -huh. um I think they're good quality enough, you know, this, they're expensive enough anyway, a lot of them. They um, are. And, and really, the main distinction that I'm aware of that Jeffrey makes is when it's taken internally. Yeah. 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 And for that, you really don't, I mean, it's very, it's pretty rare. I mean, you have to be really quite an expert at this to, to use it internally. So yeah, I, I think that if, if you feel like your oils are good enough, and you know you experiment them with them, and they seem to do something therapeutically, in the direction that you intended it to. I'd say go with it, um, you know, because I mean the one thing you know, you know, when you're looking at the really high quality stuff, it's going to be more than double the price, mm -hmm. easily. So and you know so, yeah, if you're looking at in ingesting them. And I would say, even if you're rinsing your nose with it, because at that point it isn't somewhat more internal, you know, maybe it's worth it. But otherwise, you know, for the most part, because again, depending on how much you're using in terms of patients, because, you know, you can have a whole um, pharmacy of essential oils. And what you're talking about a very, very heavy investment. Yes, I know. I have. It. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I sympathize. I, yeah, I've spent a lot of money. And then, you know, there's oils that you'll use maybe once every five years or something. And then you sort of wonder if they're even any good anymore. It's, it's probably, it's, you know, so I think if, you know, sometimes using something that's, you know, maybe only half best is not the end, is as long as it gets results. Listen, a lot of the herbs you get from China are adulterated and whatever, and it's, you know, they still seem to work. Um, and just say, you know, even something that, you know, Jeffrey once said something about, you know, people can get very careful about what food we eat and blah. And then he was like, you know, you have to go with the Tao, so to speak. I mean, you have to be, you, the whole point is to be able to adopt. Okay. So yeah, of course, there's going to be some patient, there's going to be a patient out there that only that essential oil that costs $500 a bottle is really going to make the difference. But for 80% of the patients, they're going to see enough of a change with a, a cheaper oil. And it's, you know, so it's, it's a question of how much do you want to um, invest into it up front? Well, um, and also being able to get it is, is better than not being able to get it. Yeah. So <laughs> the oil that, that, you know, you can't get because it's at some source, you know, 4,000 miles away. Um, um, you know, it's not helpful. <laughs> so I'm all in support, Mary Jo. Yeah. yeah. Although I think I would have assumed the original Swiss Aromatics has a European um, outlet, but I don't know. Oh, well, that's yeah. true because he is, yeah. he is German. Is he Austrian or German? Oh, uh, you're right. I think he's Austrian. Yeah. Yes, well, I that's think. That's a good point. He may have something. Yeah. I think I may have got that brand actually before. No. Okay. Well, that again. would be that would be worth checking out. 
but the other yeah. one the other one that he likes well there's the 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 one um that now does the chinese herbs the the evelyn roberts evelyn and but then also there's sun rose aromatics in new york and that that was what he 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 liked second best until Evelyn started her company. <laughs> and that's called Sun Rose. Sun Rose. Okay. S U N R O Z. -E? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's a, and it's in New York City in the Bronx. Okay. It's quite a lovely company. She's it's it's just I think she runs it out of her home and but she's she's very dedicated. I will say that I have used um, uh, Eden's Garden or Garden of Eden, uh, which oh, is in the Bay I don't Area. Know they're uh -huh. in the Bay Area. They seem f they they're okay. I mean, you know, yes, they. I would say that compared to original Swiss aromatics, they're quote unquote inferior. Um, <laughs> but no, no, <laughs> you know, but you know, it's it's a high, it's a it's a difficult standard. You know, it's an unfair standard. But they're price wise, they're comparable. To, you know, they're they're just about comparable to everybody else um and but quality wise they're much much better so it's definitely you know that's a you know a good company to invest in um in terms of you know when you don't want to get something that's like oh my god this is like crazy expensive um and but if you're really looking for the deluxe version and only for the deluxe version i would say yeah probably original swiss aromatics is probably your best bet yeah. And then, you know, for some people, money is not a big deal. Um, and then you just do one order and you get everything you want. And, you know, and that's totally fine. There is a good um, company that I've used some oils, but it's a, it's a UK company, Needles Yard. Um, so they do, I, th I think they're a pretty good quality. Uh, oils. Yeah, I've never, I've never, I mean, I know Needles Yard from as a, um, as, as a um, Whole Foods store, you know, in the old days. So I don't, you know, um, Neil's Yard is basically a little bit like Rainbow in San Francisco, Camille. Uh, so, oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I mean, it was like one of the first places where you could get, you know, bulk and, you know, like in, in orga organic and stuff like that. Um, I, I lived right near there 39 years ago. Oh, Believe okay. me, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize when when they were still on Mission Street and they had oh, you talk about Rainbow store. Yes, yeah, yes. Rainbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. I don't, I don't know the one in the UK. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, well, I didn't know. Um, yeah, yeah, so you know, so it's so for example, Rainbow. I I would not get the Rainbow brand of essential oils, for example, because they do have like um, some sort of um, um, generic brand that they they put their own labels uh -huh. on. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. So it's it's always hard to tell. I mean, what again? I would just use whatever you're comfortable with, and at some point, if you like, you know, if you figure out, oh, I really want to try this interesting blah blah blah, you know, try one of Kurt's oils and see what you know and see what you think, and then you'll you'll go, oh, okay, I see what they're talking about, or you'll say, ah, you know, it's like it's for them that's nice for them i'm i'm i don't need that kind of you know it, it's too much trouble you'll, you'll just decide on your own you know it's no big deal I and mean, there's plenty of essential oils and there's plenty of them that you know plenty of companies that they work well enough there's no reason to um to go crazy on it yeah. you know except when you suddenly get a case and you go oh my god maybe i really should try this really super super situation and then you you either it either confirms what what you what 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 people say about it or it may not and that's totally possible you know it's not not, not the same for everyone yeah. <laughs> enough advertisements for <laughs> oil companies <laughs> so what are we talking about today mary joe <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, something I was going to ask, Avi, um, yes. just in relation to um, tachycardia. Uh -huh. um, you know, the different types. Um, do you do like, do you differentiate between the different types or do you kind of do the same treatment? Okay. You know, well, I'm, I'm talking, one particular 
person now has the, um, is it SVT, goes by so, so the upper, supraventricular mm -hmm. tachycardia. And I was just wondering, do you, do you differentiate between the different types? Or I don't know enough about it to comment. So I really can't, I, I honestly can't say, I, I don't have the, not, you know, I, I didn't know that there were different, I mean, well, I assumed that there were different types because it, it can depend on, well, you know, it, it sounds like in this case, there's a differentiation of which valve is involved uh, or some yeah, of like the upper chambers, you know, yeah, but I chamber, don't, lower chambers are the actual sinus rhythm, you know, right. Rifle, uh, so the question, so, but I, I'm kind of, again, because I don't know, I don't want to, you know, say anything. I think the thing is, the question to me is, so, I mean, I would have assumed that the tachycardia, well, besides AFib, which is a kind of a separate category, um, um, that tachycardia can come from both, well, a number of different options, but it, it can be dictated by the, I would have assumed that it can be dictated by the pacemaker as well as the valves and the muscle itself. So I would have assumed that there'll be differentiation there, but I mean, I'm, I'm no cardiologist. I have no, I really um, don't know enough about it. Um, the difference is that with AFib, that it has, it's, it's a definite, definite conductivity issue. It's a definitely nerve firing issue. And what they do is they do an ablation in order to um, basically stop that rhythm, you know, stop that signal of the rhythm. Um, so that's the, I, unfortunately, I don't know enough about um, the, di the different options. So, you know, for me, when, when I think of different types of tachycardia, I'm thinking different type of patients. In other words, what else do they come with? You know, did this start with say, you know, a high fever? Is it genetic? Is it, you know, what, what, what is the, what else is happening in the patient is what, much more interesting to me, um, you know, perhaps because of lack of knowledge, uh, than the, than the, um, the label, the label type. Um, now that my, again, I don't know, because it may be that when I, you know, like this may be a more, it may not be, but it may be a more, something that say, is more recent, this, these differentiations. So when I started, you know, maybe that wasn't emphasized. Um, so I, don't, I just don't have enough background um, mm. to be able to say, uh, and I've never kind of asked patients when, when that, by the way, it's not the most common, I've, I've had a few, but it's not the most common symptom that people come from for, even if they have it. Yeah. So it's more, um, that I'm going, my God, what the hell is going on with this pulse that determines it for me? Now, occasionally you do get patients that have, that actually, that are cardiac patients knowingly and are coming specifically for that. I've had a few of those. But for the most part, my, when I'm looking at um, tachycardia, I'm looking more as a type. This is a type of rapid pulse. Okay, as opposed to the slow pulse, you know, just because slow pulse people do not show up so much on the abdomen for the most part. Some of them do, but mostly they don't. They often will not respond as well to the front treatments. They'll respond much more on the back. And you do should not needle their lower abdomen. You know, th those okay, are the, Sorry? Yeah, this person does have slow pulse, actually. Oh, so they, they are not tachycardic. Well, that's what they have been told. Oh. Medical, they were put on medication. Okay. Little consult. With, oh, oh, okay. So they were, okay. So they were originally, uh, rap, let's call it rapid. So they, were, they had rapid heartbeat originally. I think um, this person had a monitor, um, had a monitor on for a while and seemingly at particular times the heart just you know goes racing and then it kind okay of that's a different yeah 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 okay so that's you know so yeah that's a slightly different story i mean i can't still i mean i'm not saying it's not tachycardia but the thing is it's i'm talking about when i'm taking the pulse you know they're on the they're on the treatment table i'm taking the pulse and it goes like whoa this is like really fast you know and i usually don't count you know so we'll call it above above 100, let's say, or even above 90. So I'm much more interested in slow version now. 
if a person has, when you take the pulse, it's slow, but they have episodes where it goes berserk. Yeah. That's, that is, I would assume, that's a nervous system issue. That's something to do with a pacemaker. That it, It's something to do with the nervous system does not adjust. These are often people who will have weird blood pressures. Mm -hmm. Okay. It may not be high. It may be low. Not may not be low. May not be high. But it also, often they'll they'll. There's a kind of person that can never say what their blood pressure is, not because they don't take it. They actually take it, because it's constantly varying. Okay. So they'll either have a weird gap, or they'll have an interesting blood pressure, or it will be one of those that you know they can't tell you. I have low. I have. They'll tell you I take it one day and it's high, and I take it one day and it's low. That kind of person is a little bit more susceptible to these bursts of, you know. And then again, if it's like, if it's a burst and it's very rapid, that will be considered an AFib. And again, that's definitely a, a nerve conduction situation. At least according to what I know, having confessed that I know nothing about cardiology. <laughs> you know, cardiology. No, I mean, you know, it's not my, it's not a specialty that I have. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't studied, you know, cardiology from the Western perspective at all. Um, so, I, you know, I would look at treating the nervous system as well as cardiac and see where you get with it. Yeah, she does show um, generally um, adrenal as well. Okay. And uh, but, but not a whole lot else actually in the abdomen. She did show the left side, you know, kidney line. Left side kidney line, okay, on the chest. On the chest. And, and then chances um, are chest so someone with which is typical cardiac granted. Chances are with cardiac you will find left stomach left left spleen twenty and left small intestine eleven. Those are very typical of cardiac. And they often show inner border of the scapula on the left side. Now, I would, okay, so, you know, I'll give you some dogma, but uh, okay, let, let's start with the dogma and then go through the medical history just for the sake of it. So if it's officially rapid pulse, and especially if the pulse is relatively big, like it's not a tiny, tiny pulse, um, then I would go with REN4. Okay. And so if she has adrenal, I would, you know, I would treat adrenal. I would do everything else. I would do whatever is in the medical history, which we will go through in a second if you have any to offer. And then I would basically, you know, since it is an autonomic nervous system issue, I would release the SCM. I would start with Sanjo 8. I would go with possibly under the third toe especially if the pulse is what I call now, this is a contradiction between the REN4 indication pulse-wise and under the third toe. REN4 is like a flooding pulse. Um, under the third toe is what we call a tight pulse, meaning it feels wiry, it, it has a stringiness, but when you, it's often weak or it's thin, when you, which is opposite of flooding when you press on that pulse, it either becomes rolling slippery soft or it disappears altogether. So under the third it tends not to be a good point for slow pulse, just like REN4 is not a good point for slow pulse. The difference is under the third toe, if they have that quality that softens upon pressure or disappears on pressure, under the third toe you can still use. Okay. Um, so, I would look at that and then also look at how much blood dispersion, you know, the, there are two things with cardiac issues, which granted with um, bursts like that, it's not as important, but it's still worth checking into that they, they are not anemic, that they don't have, that there is enough blood for whatever you're pushing on the heart, because you, you're basically pushing the heart in, with doing the needles. You're asking the heart to, to pump more clearly more strongly whatever and if there's not enough blood in the vessels you're making the pump go against a vacuum so you're going to make the pump the heart actually um, get weaker because you forced it to go against the condition that it it, it you know wh which may have been the reason why it's doing it if they don't have enough blood the heart will start showing issues the other thing you want to resolve before you uh, address the heart um, with say Renfor under 30 you know things like that is 
make sure there's no edema anywhere. Okay, and if there is, start, it's not like you have to get rid of the edema immediately before you, you, you do anything, but do, you know, start addressing the edema and move the water. So that's spleen three, spleen seven, spleen 11. Start moving the water a little bit because otherwise you're making the heart pump against a, the opposite of a vacuum, against a wall, the edema. So you, you, in both cases, you, you need to address the other possible pre-existing condition, which may not be, may be a result of the cardiac problem, granted, uh, but it might be the cause of the cardiac problem too. But you can't make the heart pump against either a vacuum or too much pressure. Okay? Then on the, um, actually this you can do on the front, you can check uh, bladder 60, especially on the left, but also on the right can show. If bladder 60 has pressure pain on it, you do 66 and 67 metal water. If not, just needle bladder 60 upwards. Um, now this, I don't, for, you know, do remember that the liver is the mother of, of the, you know, um, uh, wood is mother of fire. So treating liver and cardiac conditions, maybe it may be worth looking at. Okay, what's okay. going on? Then on the back, I do um, do two is very important um, for the um, inner uh, scapula on the left and sacroiliac ligaments. That's like UB27, that's the equivalent of REN4 on the back. And then I can do small intestine 910 to release the rhomboids. I can considerably at that point, now that I've done a fair amount, and now I can possibly do heart three. And then now I can actually moxa or needle the inner board of the scapula and small intestine 11. So that's kind of like the final thing that I'm doing is actually addressing the heart locally with moxa. That's one of the weird things about both the heart and the lung is that you actually do have to get into that area that's right behind them and dissolve that puffy tissue, you know, preferably with moxa, but needle, at least needle, but needle plus moxa is better. Um, so that's kind of like what, you know, the, the standard dogma that I use up front, release the nervous system, address the cardiac, blah, blah, blah. But I would also look at what else, you know, like, um, so this is kind of interesting because people often, you know, they, um, they, they always think that I want the abdomen. You know, so they're, you know, they always get a little bit, it, it's a little bit like being put on by the, you know, when you went to acupuncture school and being put up by the teacher and, you know, like, well, what's the pulse? Oh, blah, 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 blah. Why are we slippery weak or something? Or whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to do that. And the abdomen, yes, is worthwhile talking about. I would, but actually I would say medical history for me pre preempts abdomen on some level in my way of thinking because whatever ca causes they've had to to that might have helped precipitate the condition and that includes parents and even possibly grandparents or other conditions that are um, super important like for example in a case of heart disease uh, thyroid issues can cause problems like this uh, specifically hyperthyroid um, and diabetes can cause some problems, okay? Um, various kind of infections. Do they have an autoimmune disorder? So there are some conditions in the body that no matter what need to be addressed and dealt with. It doesn't matter what the other condition is. So the dogma for the condition they come for becomes secondary to the fact, oh my God, but you're diabetic. Let's, let's deal with that and add cardiac. You know, um, so that's kind of the what what I would say. You know, so I'm always interested in what what has happened to this person in their lives, or what do they bring in genetically speaking. Does that make can, sense? Yes. Come here. No, I'll let Mary Jo go first, but I do have a question. Does that make no. sense? Go ahead, Camille. Um, can you address? more the link between diabetes and and tachycardia because i'm not familiar with that well okay not not in the sense of direct you know like okay here's the research of like blah 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 but in the sense of diabetes affects blood vessels 
affects circulation. Therefore, in so it's you know I I don't I can't tell you the diabetes causes the X this formation in in blah blah sphincter or in the pacemaker, but it's very I mean it's because diabetes affects circulation, it's going to eventually affect the heart. Oh, okay. So, so it's, does that make sense? It's, it's not, it's not, and although I'm sure that there are, there is presumably research that shows X amount of diabetics have cardiac conditions and it's, I'm willing to, to guarantee or bet um, that it's way higher than the general population. But that's not what I meant. What I meant was because diabetes is affecting microcirculation. It's gonna, in the same way that you can get neuropathy in the leg, which means, granted, it's not the large circulation. So it doesn't affect the heart as directly. But then what happens, imagine, you know, you can, you can assume that it has a somewhat similar, now granted, cardiac circulation is the opposite of uh, peripheral. The first circulation is into the cardiac. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so it's uh, uh, the opposite of the toes. Okay, so the toes may get cold, cold and blue, but the heart may still stay stay red and warm mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. for, for a, a long period of time until maybe it comes back. But there is a possibility in any diabetic situation because the, all every cell in the body is 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 um, at at less capacity with diabetes. That's why it's so important because it affects. You know, you can't ever tell what a diabetic person is going to come up, you know, what symptom the diabetic person is going to, is going to have because of diabetes. It may even not look like it. It may look like, oh, well, but I fell. And you're going, yes. And how come spleen three does the good job for it? Because it's, um, the diabetes predisposes you for huge, for, for weaknesses because every cell in the body is affected, is, is now no longer um, at maximum capacity. Mm -hmm. capacity maybe i should i should say so that's why it's diabetes is always a thing to consider um and thyroid is always a thing to consider because again thyroid affects the the way you know a little mm -hmm. less so maybe than diabetes but still it affects how every cell in the body every system in the body is going to be somewhat affected by it mm -hmm. and because it affects the nervous system then it has a double whammy um, with a thyroid. It's not just the met met metabolism of the cell, it's also like the whole input, the whole uh, state of, um, uh, not, not contractivity, I don't know if that, that would be the right word, but you know, just for the image of it, you know, how tight the cells are due to, to nerve impulse. You know, how, how uh, easy, how easy um, they're able to communicate um, of membranes across cells and stuff like that, and or cells coordinating uh, through uh, organ tissue and stuff is going to be affected by thyroid also because it affects mm -hmm. the nervous system. Mm -hmm. Now that's just my imagery. I'm I'm not about to write. You know, I'm 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 assuming that most physiology books uh, uh, will will not will not say this. <laughs> yes. Well, there's a lot they don't say. So well, that's their <laughs> that's their prerogative. <laughs> yeah. Can I also make a comment, yes, by the way, yes. which yes. is, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned the aspect about not having enough blood to pump. Um, I think it's also tremendously important to discern between rapid and strong versus rapid and weak when the heart is getting progressively weaker, which is what happens when people end up on beta blockers, you know, that which is... Mm -hmm here at least the you know the most common thing they're going to do to treat both tachycardia and afib and and what i see all the time is those drugs weaken the heart and so the heart tries to compensate and work harder and then you have more tachycardia more afib and then they increase the medication and it gets to the part, point where the heart can't even function so I think it's actually also quite important to step in with, you know, things to strengthen the heart, which which Western medicine doesn't see at all. But you know, um, herbs like Huang Chi, uh, or you know, Sheng Mai San, that kind of thing, or nutritionals um, yeah. to strengthen the heart. Um, um, 
you know, whatever, whichever course you want to take. But, um, um, you know, if it's, if it's very early in the process of, uh, you know, where a person has not been taking beta blockers for very long, I actually try to get them off of it if I can. Um, but if they've been on it for a long time, then, you know, it's, I, I just, I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the beta blockers are definitely a problematic situation. There's no no doubt. I hate them. I no. hate them. <laughs> well, thankfully you're not on them. <laughs> no, and I never will be. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I I, I accept. Um, not that I recommend. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it, it is. I it's mean, a huge problem when you're starting to mess with with such a basic phenomenon. Um, and then you're surprised that everything, you know, everything starts falling apart. But you know, like, let's be honest, you know, like from a from a cardiologist or, or you know a doctor's point of view, this is what they have to offer, and it's 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 it seems to work to some extent, you know. So that's why they keep they keep pushing them. Yeah. Well, it's difficult. Work work is a relative term, but <laughs> yes. you know. I actually I said think seem it's to one work. of the main. I think it's one of the main reasons that that we see so much, you know, nursing home slump, so mm -hmm. much catatonia, and 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 I think a lot of what is interpreted as as dementia is due to beta blockers. Mm -hmm. In my mm -hmm. opinion, I, I think it's one of the main reasons that when somebody ends up in a long term care situation, like if they, you know, they always say if you break a hip you die within a year. I think it's because mm -hmm. you end up spending six or eight or 10 weeks in skilled nursing and they almost immediately get you on beta blockers and, you know, <laughs> whether you need them or not. And then that, that just, that just sends you on your way. Anyway, that, that just, that just comes from personal experience mm -hmm. <laughs> with yeah. family members. So yeah, it's yeah. kind of, yeah. I hear you. I, yeah. 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 She, I mean, she actually she doesn't have diabetes any. She's quite like slim, a slim mm -hmm. person or edema. So no just, edema, no edema, no diabetes. That's good. No, and um, I had a note here like the pulse was like fifty-seven, which is kind of that's slow, slowish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that that would be considered slow. I mean, it's not super slow, but it's slow enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what you can do instead of rent four, if you're not comfortable with rent four, especially if you can't determine, you know, sometimes it's not that easy, especially people like that with the pulse switches, they, they suddenly have like this AFib thing. The pulse quality can also switch, um, you know, so if you're not clear, okay, they, so for example, if they have a really thin, teeny, teeny pulse, rent four is not a good point for them. So what you can do is use on the side, go go to the side to Mushu, to side gold ladder 27 and use that instead. Yeah. You know, rent for is not the only point in, in the book. Yeah, she does have um, um, like a digestive, which is like a sensitive digestive system. And I don't know, do, do you ever relate the, uh, the kind of uh, irregular heart with digestive issues? Yes, Could it can happen. Feel, um, yeah, she feels that um, it's mostly at night. Uh -huh. that she what wakes she up have? This, with um, this lower abdomen pain, and she said she feels something races up to her head, kind of, and her heart. She can feel feel her heart kind of race as well. So what is when? So we're talking about lower abdomen, meaning below the navel. Yeah. And what does she feel again in the lower abdomen? Well, she wakes up with a kind of a, like a soreness and it, it, it's kind of, it can be, get worse depending if she eats, um, you know, maybe something that she wouldn't normally have, or, you know, like something maybe a little bit spicy or... Okay. So, okay, so there are a few connections uh, that can be made you know, outside, you know, the I know that there's the small intestine heart connection, which nobody totally understands. Uh, or, well, I don't totally understand how they decided on that. Um, but, you know, so the stomach and the heart are clearly related 
you know, so again, if she eats spicy, it may actually be that she may feel it lower down in the stomach, but it might be in the stomach. But the stomach and the heart also share uh, a connection through T5. Okay? The innervation of the stomach comes from T5 and T5, you know, is, is cardiac. So there is that option. The other option is, I'm not sure how that exactly. Okay, so because when you're eating something that the intestines rebel against, the intestine create that, I don't know exactly how to describe it, that this rebellion phenomenon, which affects the nervous system. Okay, um, so I think there's a, there, there's a possibility between those. Now, now the other thing is you said it rushes to the head. So the REN4 is called the, the, the gateways to the primary and primary in this situation specifically means um, the head. So it's called Guan Yuan and this Yuan is like two lines over the legs, meaning the head over the legs. So it means primary as the controller as opposed to there's other kind of yuan that means source, like the source of water. But REN4 is like the, the, um, the primary, you know, the controller, the, you know, that kind of source. So REN4 and the head are cl clearly related. And you can see it, for example, women post um, uh, labor. So there's been a lot of trauma in the lower dantian, in the REN4 area. There's been a lot of strain, and then they get postpartum depression, for example. Okay, so you can see there's a clear connection between the head and, and the lower abdomen. Um, so just simply because she says, you know, I feel this, this digestion, something, discomfort, and then I feel it rushing to the head. And I don't know if she says, but, you know, in, in, in the pathway, the heart gets wrapped up with it also. I would say that, yeah, then REN4 now becomes more your target, not so much possibly with needling, because that's where the problem might be. So I would look at side gallbladder 27, take REN4, go all the way to the side into the glute medius, and see if you can help with that. Uh, possibly inner yin, like kidney channel on liver nine on the kidney channel might be a good useful point with something like that and so I, you said the pulse is 57 do you do you recall the quality or the strength um from from my memory i think it's it was like a weak a weak type of pulse okay. so if it's weak and she has digestive problems i would look at spleen three Spleen three is good for weak pulse types. Um, now it's what this is one of those dogmas. Spleen three is good for weak spleen for weak pulse, and spleen four is good for big pulse, overflowing pulse. Uh, and you sort of go, well, but the two are like one soon apart. Like how the hell is does that happen? I don't know, but I I can't speak much about the spleen four. I can tell you that people with chest issues. If you needle spleen three and they have a big pulse or worse, if you needle spleen four and they have a, a thin, very weak pulse, spleen four for thin pulse doesn't work very well. They can occasionally develop discomfort on the table, you know, in the chest, if they already have chest problems. So, but since she has a weak pulse, and, you know, because both spleen three and four are digestive points, but spleen three, I would say more. I, I will take it more for that. Um, so nothing else in the medical history that one can latch on to? No, not a whole lot, really, no. Yeah, okay. Um, so sometimes in a case like this, what I would do is I would push to see if there is any, because sometimes people don't remember. And although, and by the way, you know, I have them write it down in advance. You know, that's all I ask for is the medical history. I don't ask, I don't have them circle anything. I don't have them, you know, I just want to know what age, what did you have? And inevitably they forget. And I want to know what their parents and grandparents had. And sometimes they forget. So at that point, when I'm stuck, I just start pushing. By the way, is there anything else in your medical history? Blah, 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 blah. And if they say no, no, okay, I can't, <laughs> I can't go and make it up, uh, tell stories. But Sometimes they'll come up with, you know, if you push for it, especially if you, you know, like uh, if you start talking about ancestors, 
there may be something that's, that might come up again, uh, or for the first time rather, um, just because you asked. So sometimes I just, you know, I just review. Um, sometimes I go back to the original paper that they wrote and I go, oh, yeah, I forgot that they wrote this <laughs> because it didn't seem relevant at the time. I right, damn. Um, and then I try to start chasing that, you know. Um, but but I just review, you know, when I, when I kind of don't get results, the first thing I do, you know, like I clear, you know, like, oh, the treatment looks great on the table, you know, abdomen gets cleared, blah, 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 everything looks good. Um, but then the person comes back, you know, the next week and say the chain didn't do jack shit for me, you know, or a few weeks later, they, they keep, you know, it's, it's not moving. That's when I review the history. She, she does get extremely tired. Um, okay. Uh, at any particular times? Most kind of towards evening, I suppose, you know. Okay. Uh, check out so one more thing that you could do is okay step check both stomach 30 and the stomach chi see, see if what her stomach chi line looks like she, now, does, you, have, oh. she, she does have some bumps from my memory okay. on, and because i think I, would, that I have done them i think a few times okay. for so i would definitely look at that um, as as a as a situation. To, so again, you know, it's one of the. So remember, the pause has to have three qualities. It has to have shen. It has to have strength, and it has to have stomach chi. So if it's already if it's lacking quote unquote by with stomach chi, you know, it's a little bit like give them some blood first before you treat the cardiac. So if if there is that tiredness, that maybe there's this digestive issue that causes the tiredness and of course in tcm well that's the stomach channel you know like, you know you can make a lot if you want out of there it's just not my necessarily my line of thinking but i would look at the stomach chi line and look at what what you can uh, get out of the out of that and the fact that she doesn't have a lot showing you know she has the left you know maybe this left side kidney thing will this will get better with the left stomach chi by the way, with stomach chi, always do the left ones before you do the right ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, Why is uh, that, Avi? I've never heard that before. Because you want to treat the chi before you treat the blood. Oh, that I generally, sense. generally, I treat the left side first with everything. And the reason why is because for me, the left side is the chi side and the right, oops, and the right side is the uh, blood side. I know that some people feel that it's the opposite. Oh, uh, 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 interesting. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Hmm. Um, now, I've had one case once uh, where the stomach chi was so very painful, so that became a reflex. Um, you know, like I had to release that first so, so that, you know, that, I'm not saying that's your case, but, you know, there's always ways to play with whatever we find, you know, so not to get stuck with the abdomen should show. The abdomen sometimes doesn't show. She has a pulse of 57 and maybe that's her real pulse, even though she has AFib. Then that's what's more important than, than ac accept the fact that a slow pulse person tends not to show as much in the abdomen. Most of them don't show much in the abdomen. So then you look for other things, you know, and if stomach chi is some, you know, I mean, if she has bumps, but if, if let's say she has a little, because bumps are hard to evaluate, but if, if you can, if there's maybe a little pain on the stomach chi, maybe that becomes another reflex to check points against. Okay. I mean, it's just a theory. It's just a, an option. But just to, you know, one has to kind of keep exercising a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Avi, do you tend to do it with stomach chi? How, huh? how do you release it, particularly like with that case of it being so tender? Okay. So, yeah, I had to have to, remember, I think, I think this particular person, it was inner yin that did it. Okay. Um, that's my recollection. The other option, well, this, my recollection was this person, there was some sort of 
um, head thing that was happening. So that's why I started thinking about those stomach chi points as jue, um, those bumps. And so I started with the, with the jue points, the points under the shoestring points on the foot. And that didn't seem to get very much. And then I, I was thinking, well, maybe I can do it from the head and that didn't do it. And, but then I, I thought that if I get her to use, use the legs better, the inner thighs better, so there's a lift, so things are not dropping. Okay. And, um, and so inner yin did it. Now this was somebody, again, someone with diabetes and stuff. So there was, a, you know, there was a whole lot more going on. You know, and again, the diabetes was important, it's important to treat. And the inner yin I also arrived at because part of the diabetes treatment is to do adrenal, is kidney. Um, because this person is, is a lot overweight, um, when I do a kidney channel with someone who's, you know, where, where the thighs are enormous, you're stimulating a point under the knee, but the stimulation can't penetrate the the amount of uh, dampness or the weight the fat that that's push, pushing against it that's dropping down against the stimulation so you need to shuttle that needle with an extra point so that's why you know you i want inner yin a kidney point above the knee to help the kidney seven uh-huh kidney uh -huh. six because it's the kidney six or kidney seven on on someone who's like really huge it's like you did nothing you know, on many of them, because there's just, there's too much resistance to the, um, to, to the conduction of whatever's happening below the knee. You know, there's just too much weight uh, obstructing. Okay. That's probably something I could try maybe too. Would you think the, under the, the, those points under the- The sway points? Uh, yeah. I, okay, I would say it's not my first go-to for, for the person you described primarily. The joy points don't have like an official rapid slow category, but that the Jin wells generally seem to work that the extremities tend to work better for more rapid pulse. Could she be a joy? Maybe she's not, I mean, chest or head symptoms should go with it. So yeah, it's worth, it's worth checking. It's not my, the first thing. I mean, you know, for me, anything is worth checking. Yeah. It's not the first thing that's coming up for me, but the, you know, just because it's not the first thing that's coming up for me doesn't mean it's not the first thing that that's, that works for them. You know, sometimes it's the last thing on my mind, and oh, gee, you've been here four times, and now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'm, you know, I shouldn't be paid, but it's the way it is. So it's everything is worth checking. That's great. Thank you. Abby. Sure. Anything else before we end? Thank you so much. No problem. Um, so enjoy. Uh, I guess we are almost in summer. <laughs> so, yes. And uh, I hope things are well. And we'll talk next week. And for you as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.